Tarsian Manirakitsa is responsible for the transport. Farmer Pamphlet does not dare to cycle the loaded bike himself. Even if you're an experienced rider, you put your life at risk. First I ask for the price. Then I buy three types, just three. A sweet type of banana, a flowery one, and one that's less dear. Obviously the mixture is important. The beer is supposed to be tasty. I know nothing about brewing. That's why I'm a driver and I'm happy to be able to transport Pamphil's bananas. That's how I struggle alone. Whenever he is not transporting bananas, Tarsian offers rides on his bicycle taxi. Tarsian has loaded eight clusters onto his bike. Together, they make up for 160 kilos. He has to transport them 15 kilometers. Luckily, the first part is downhill. Three kilometers from his destination, there is a long ascent. Now Tassian must really pedal. Tarsian is 22 years old. He never went to school. Riding my bike is all I'm good at. I never did anything else. I don't even want to, except if I found less tiring work. I definitely don't want to be carrying anything on top of my head like the women do. It's exhausting to pedal, yes, but carrying things on my head? No way. After 45 minutes, Tarsian reaches his destination, the banana beer brewer's village. Burundi is one of the poorest countries in Africa. Owning a bike is worth a great deal here. But Tarsian must already support a wife and two kids in his early 20s. <laughs> How can I save money with a job like this? It's just about enough to sustain my family and myself, nothing more. Look, I can't even afford new trousers. I am no dreamer. This job holds no future whatsoever. Pamphil has been brewing banana beer, Umbubira, on the farm next to his house and is in for 15 years now. He lets the bananas ripen in a pit for another week. The farmer can only process the bananas if they have developed enough sweetness. Otherwise, the fermentation process might not take place properly. Bananas with a thick skin are especially well suited for producing banana beer. His own family and a few workers from the village assist Pamphil with the production. What it is? <laughs> The workers use fresh, cleaned hay to help them squeeze out the liquid. 
The hay also creates Pamphia's banana beer's special flavor. My life as a beer brewer is a good one, really. I make good money and I'm able to pay the workers' wages. I will never be rich, of course. I mean, we can't afford to buy new shoes and things like that. But I don't have to go around stealing things. The family has enough to eat and we can send the kids to school. Nobody tells me what to do and I don't need to go chasing after my money. I am my own master. <laughs> It's still only banana juice. <laughs> to turn it into beer, the liquid has to be stored for a few days. The brewer's yeast allows for fermentation. It takes two days for the beer to be right. Two bottles of this and everything spins round. But right now it's unfermented. It doesn't make you tipsy. But the beer Pamphia serves in his inn does. He doesn't know the alcohol percentage. He never measured it. <laughs> <laughs> Bicycle courier Tarsian drinks only after the work has been done. Drunk driving, much too dangerous when you're on the road of the racing cyclists. <laughs> Here in the north, not only bananas are grown, but also coffee, tea and rice. The road leading to the banana beer brewer's village continues on leading south. To Buyumbura, the capital city of Burundi, it's 100 kilometers. And it's up and down the hill the whole way. The road serves as a transit route between Rwanda and Tanzania. Antoine Kabura has been driving it for 10 years with his truck. Normally, he only drives during daytime. Driving at night would be too risky. The roads are all right, but much too narrow, sometimes not even six meters wide. Oncoming traffic often poses problems. You must always avoid the potholes and these many bends. Luckily, I'm a good driver, but for a main road, it's definitely too narrow. Antoine arrives at Gitega, the second largest city of Burundi, with 45,000 inhabitants. Alex Iradukunda works as a reporter for the local radio station, Humorisa. Her job is to report on the traffic, which primarily means the situation for the cyclists. Tell me, what are the difficulties? For us cyclists, the trucks are worse. They make life difficult for us. I hear this over and over again. They complain about the trucks. It really is a tough and exhausting job. Not to mention the bike thieves. Their numbers are increasing. It's bad when the bike is gone. And don't forget the accidents and injuries. Gitega, situated in the center of the country, used to be the capital of the kingdom of Burundi. It was also the administrative center at the turn of the century from the 19th to the 20th century, when Burundi was a German colony. Today, the city is an important traffic junction. <laughs> 20th 
26 reporters work for Radio Humorisa. Alex is done with her report on the cyclists. It's difficult for the cyclists here, even those just transporting other people. But for those who transport bulky goods, it's even more difficult. But they have no choice. Their wives and kids need something to eat. Another 60 kilometers to Buyumbura, uphill, downhill. Antoine Kabura could drive faster, but he knows what's happening behind him, so he doesn't want to risk an accident. Whoever wants to save time and energy holds on to his truck. Antoine finds this really annoying. What they are doing poses a lethal hazard, not only for them, but also for us truck drivers. I often have to abruptly dodge due to approaching traffic or because of a pothole. The cyclists that are holding on to the truck can't see it coming. They're surprised by it and crash. Terrible. I often see it in the rear mirror. Some die. I think they should stop it. It's prohibited, too. Eric Nitsitunga has been transporting bananas from the north to the capital for five years. He fixed 14 clusters to his carrier. That's about 250 kilos, a lot, even by Burundian standards. I have to tie the bananas to the carrier in such a way that the center of gravity lies in the middle. One mistake and I would lose my balance in the curves and crash. I also have to make sure that the bananas don't get bruised. Even Eric can't resist the temptation to let himself be pulled up the hill. It doesn't always turn out well. Some road sections are unpaved, difficult to drive for the truck drivers. There are some drummers with their heavy instruments along the road near Gishora. Their destination is a nearby hill. It is considered the cradle of the Burundian art of drumming. They used to perform before the kings. Today, they play the drums for whoever pays and to preserve peace. Just a few years ago, Burundi saw the end of a long civil war. The 74-year-old Antime Baranspekave is the leader of the Geshora Master Drummers. I became a drummer because my ancestors were drummers. My great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father. They all drummed for the kings. This tradition must survive.
The police have been checking more often on the Burundi Highway lately. A welcome opportunity for the street vendors to offer their products. A nuisance for the drivers. Security check. The horn, blinkers and headlights. I check the papers and inspect the vehicles. It's all about increasing safety on the road. The officers also punish cyclists that hold onto trucks. Whoever gets caught must pay a fine. Eric, the courier, puts up with that. I think the cyclists should really stop holding onto our trucks. Too many accidents happen because of it. It should be banned. The police should enforce it. Or the cyclists could fix a little engine to their bikes for going uphill. Eric heard the policeman's whistle just in time to let go. The Burundi government has almost doubled the amount of traffic policemen over the last years. Too many accidents occur on the roads in Burundi, also due to technical defects. But the main problem are the racing cyclists. More action should be taken against these cyclists holding on to trucks. It's simply too dangerous. It is prohibited, but they just won't respect us. Another 40 kilometers to Buyumbura. The closer you get to the capital, the busier the narrow road becomes. The Kibira National Park, with its 400 square kilometers, runs along a small side road. Once the splendid mountain forest used to be the king's holy hunting grounds. The Batva live in a small village close to the national park in Busikera. Up until a few years ago, the hunters and gatherers lived in the midst of the rainforest. In 2007, the government decided to transfer them to the area next to the main road. Viola Iduvimana is 40 years old and has eight kids. <laughs> I was born and raised in the jungle. This life is not easy. We have to collect wood and have to fetch water from far away. That's exhausting. But I enjoy the pottery. I learned it when I was a kid, watching my mom work. Now I can sustain my family with my pottery. I'm teaching my kids how to do it too. That's why it's going so well for us here. Next door, the men sit together and carve wood. They have lost their traditional hunting grounds since the resettlement. But being so close to the main road opens new opportunities for them and their families. They can now sell their carvings and pottery to travelers. About 500 people live in Busiquera. More than half of them are children. Apart from their handicrafts, the Batva are farmers and breed cattle on the land they were granted by the government.
The next stage on the cyclist road leads from Bugorama to the capital city, Buyumbura. Already early in the morning, the first cyclists are on their way to supply the markets. The Bugorama cyclists are famous throughout the whole country. They transport the heaviest and bulkiest goods and are the fastest riders. Bugorama, situated at the southern tip of the Kibira National Park, is a traffic junction. Two federal roads meet here and unify to lead to the capital of Burundi. Bicycle courier Eric lives near Bugorama. The bananas here are cheaper than in the capital. Today, one cluster cost 8,000 Burundian francs, about 4 euros. Together with his girlfriend, Eric lives in a small house right on the road to Buyumbura. They have no children yet. They want to wait until Eric has found a less dangerous job. <laughs> the 200 kilo load literally pushes Eric downhill. He quickly reaches speeds of up to 60 to 70 kilometers an hour. He can't apply the brakes. His tires would burst. If the roads are wet, you're likelier to slip. But since he can't apply the brakes, he must wait for the next ascent. Until then, it's brace yourself and hope for the best. Nobody knows just how many accidents occur and how many cyclists are actually involved. There is no such thing as traffic statistics in Burundi. Often the poor condition of the bikes is responsible. The last ascent up to Buyumbura is tough. Without help, no one would manage to move forward. And so a new profession emerged, the pushing assistant. The men earn 10 cent for the 15-minute tour. At the end of the long ascent, a little shop offers food and beverages. Eric doesn't always have enough money to buy something for himself after this exhausting ascent. Lucia, the shop assistant, knows Eric and puts it on the tab if he can't pay. She feels for the cyclists. This work takes up a lot of energy. You need to be really strong in order to do this. Especially if you have to push the fully loaded bike uphill. Often it weighs more than 200 kilos. So you need lots of energy. That's why I eat mainly carbs, for example corn, and I drink hot milk every day. From here to Buyumbura is another 15 kilometers, and it's only downhill. Eric trusts his steering abilities. He doesn't have much choice. He already had quite a few accidents, but up to now, he only suffered some bruises and bone fractures.
Arrival in Buyumbura. The cyclists have to push their way through the traffic of this lively metropolis. The first shop Eric is delivering to lies at the far end of the city. There are many little shops and restaurants along the capital streets. Most of them can't afford professional advertising. That's why they hire artists like Clovis Milamwi. The 26-year-old makes a living of that. En fait, normalement, moi, je suis un artiste peintre. I'm an artist, but if people ask me, I'd also do ads for them. I take between 100,000 and 150,000 Burundian francs for such a picture. It's not bad. That would amount to the equivalent of 50 to 75 euros. Buyumbura is the largest city in Burundi. It is the economic center of the country. Around 400,000 people live here. It takes a very specific technique to park the bicycle in such a way that it doesn't fall down with the 200 kilo load on it. Five times a week, Eric delivers two banana clusters to the little shop. For each cluster, he gets 12,000 Burundian francs. That's six euros, two euro of an income remain. Here in the heavy traffic of the city, the challenge for Eric is of a different kind compared to his cross-country ride. It's not about steep ascents, downhill racing or the struggle with truck drivers and the police. The difficulty lies in maintaining the balance and being careful not to get hit by other vehicles, because then he'd fall. The Sioni market is in the northwest of the capital. 85 out of 100 Burundians work in agriculture, and they all try to sell their surplus on the markets. Since the main market in the city center burnt down in 2013, the number of traders and customers at the Sioni market has doubled. One of the reasons being the government banning the street trade. Everyone had to turn to the remaining markets. Alice Sindaye is 42 years old. She has been working as a market woman for 10 years now. When the main market burnt down, she not only lost both of her stands, but all her goods went up in flames too. She had to start again from scratch. I have four kids and no husband. When the market burnt down and the hard times began, he just ran off. He never gave me any money to feed the kids and myself. I had to take out a credit loan. That helped us along, and I was able to build up a new stand here. Eric delivers bananas to Alice as well. Today he is running late due to the rain. Normally he would get 15,000 Burundian francs for a cluster of bananas. Would you lower the price a bit? I can only pay 10,000. Today, Alice pays Eric five euros per cluster, which makes one euro an hour for Eric to keep. With the thousands of cyclists in Burundi, there is always something to repair or to patch. You'll find bicycle repair shops everywhere in Burundi, especially near the markets, where most cyclists deliver their goods.
Alexandre Tassis has been the boss here for five years. Most bicycles in his shop come from China and break down easily. These bikes are basically like all the others. We have to reinforce the carrier with iron bars. Good tires are important, though. Bike courier Eric also comes here if he has enough money to afford new tires. The work is being done fast here, and he gets some good advice as well. Almost a hundred mechanics work for Alexandre. Some customers live nearby, but most of them come from far away. For example, from Gatumba or Bugurama. Some are foreigners coming from the Congo to have their bikes repaired here. They trust me. Eric appears unruffled by the fact that he has to spend a portion of his narrow income in order to keep his bike in good shape. It's very important to change tires. They were totally worn out. If there's rain like today, you can easily slip and fall. The tires burst more easily too, especially when you brake. I already patched the tube four times. It's just too dangerous. Eric cycles back to Bugorama on new tires. The Burundi racing cyclists have divided up the district. There are those who cycle in from the north and go back in the evening. The others serve the southern route. The Burundi Highway runs along the banks of Lake Tanganyika for 200 kilometers heading south, right up to the Tanzanian border. Instead of bananas, people grow lots of oil palms here. They are being transported on bicycles as well. A bunch can weigh up to 50 kilos. The landscape in the south of Burundi is less hilly than in the north, so the bike couriers can travel greater distances, up to 100 kilometers per day. If I don't have so much to carry, I enjoy my work. Like today, that's fine. I'm bringing the fruits to a palm oil factory. I then load the filled oil cans and take them to the market, where they're sold. The job is all right, so long as you hold the road well and don't have to worry about crashing in the curves. It's then I enjoy the work. Faustin Dabazanya's palm grove is situated directly on the main road. Together with his son Patrick, he looks for ripe fruits, which he can later process in his palm oil factory, which is 10 kilometers away. Patrick is a gifted climber. <laughs> Even though we are next to the lake, the soil is dry and sandy, which is not good for the palms. They don't grow properly and bear little fruit. But we are lucky. Our soil contains many nutrients, in spite of the nearby lake. That's why our palms are so tall and strong, and the oil tastes well too. Only when the fruits have taken on an orange-red color are they ripe for harvesting and are easy to pick. Patrick transports the crop from his father's palm oil grove to the oil factory himself. They have to be kept there for a few days before they can be processed to oil. Patrick much prefers climbing up the trees to carrying the heavy load on his bike.
I still go to school and I only do this in my spare time to earn some money. Later I want to take on a proper job, but right now I do both, work as a bike courier and study. Lake Tanganyika is the second largest lake in Africa. It shapes the landscape in southern Burundi. The riverbank is lined with little fishing villages along the road. Niyongabo slowly comes to life. At 6 a.m., the men return from fishing. They spent the whole night out on the lake. Today, they didn't catch much. The waves were too high. For a few years now, they are only allowed to fish every second week in order to protect the fish stock. Cesar Salvatore has been a fisherman for eight years now. I believe that fishing restrictions are a good thing. It gives us fishermen a rest, and we get to spend more time with our families. And the fish can breed in those seven days. That's a good thing. After school, Patrick earns some extra money working as a bicycle courier. He doesn't have to sustain a family, so he feels less pressure. The bike courier has arrived at Faustin's palm oil factory. The production is in full process. The ripe fruits are loosened from the bunches and are cleaned, first of all. The oil manufacturer has meanwhile gotten used to the traffic in the Adu on the adjacent road. Faustin has been in the palm oil business for three years now. The oil palm means a lot to us. It always gives us oil, which we can use for cooking. We use the palm fronds as broomsticks. The remaining pips we use to make soap or shampoo. The fibers, also a byproduct, help to light a fire, and oil palm provides everything we humans need. About 20 palm oil farmers have joined in a cooperative and operate the old squeezing machine together. Everyone can process his own fruit there. Faustin is checking the production flow. The water cools the machine so the oil doesn't go rancid. 